ever get that feeling like, uh, like there's more to things than we see, you know, like a whole hidden level of reality we just can't quite grasp. Mm -hmm. Well, today we're going to dig into that. We're talking Carlos Castaneda and his Yaki sorcerer teacher, Don Juan Matas. Oh, fascinating stuff. Yeah, they called it sorcery, but we're not talking about like spells and potions, more like pushing the edges of how we see things, tapping into a force Don Juan called intent. Right, and Castaneda's books, they've really stirred things up over the years. For sure. Some folks question if it all really happened the way he wrote it. Sure, sure. But, gotta admit, the ideas about awareness, about what reality even is, it's mind-blowing stuff, even if. Absolutely. And what I find really interesting about Don Juan's teachings is how he frames sorcery. It's not about, you know, supernatural abilities, mm. but a very practical way anyone can get a stronger connection to this universal force of intent. It's about heightened awareness. Okay, so heightened awareness. Castaneda, he describes his first experience with this happening in a cave, right? And get this, a cave specifically designed by these ancient sorcerers to create that shift in perception. Yeah, like a space intentionally made to change how you experience reality itself. It's kind of like those optical illusions, right? Where you look at it one way and suddenly, boom, totally different image. Yeah, yeah. But here... It's not just a picture changing, it's your whole reality that's shifting. Whoa. So how do we even start to wrap our heads around that? Well, this is where Don Juan gets really specific. He lays out this roadmap he calls the four abstract cores. Abstract cores. Yeah, they're like key principles to this whole thing. Okay, so core number one, manifestations of the spirit. Now, I know that might sound kind of out there. Sure. But Don Juan was adamant that this force, this intent, it's always showing itself to us. We're just, most of us, we're not tuned in to see it. Right, exactly. It's like we're surrounded by radio waves all the time, but you need the right receiver to actually pick them up. Sorcerers, through their training, that's what they're developing, that heightened sensitivity. So it's not just about meditating peacefully or going on a silent retreat, right? There's more to it than that. Yeah, there's a story Don Juan tells about the Nagual Elias and this encounter he had with a young actor, a guy who seemed, well, pretty close to the edge mentally. Okay, how so? This actor, he was totally consumed by all this inner turmoil, and it's almost like he accidentally stumbles onto the path of the spirit because of it. Like his heightened emotional state, it makes him this beacon to this force. So even in chaos, even in those really intense moments, the spirit, this intent, it can break through, almost grab our attention. Exactly. And that leads right into the second abstract core, the knock of the spirit. It's that moment where you're presented with a choice, a doorway to a totally different way of seeing. But... To step through that door, you got to be willing to let go of your old way of thinking. Hmm. So it's like the universe is sending an invitation, but are you going to RSVP? Yes. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not always a gentle invitation, is it? Sometimes it's more like dot bam, pay attention. Right. Like you're going to miss this one. Exactly. And Don Juan actually uses this great example uh, from his own teacher's life to illustrate this. The Nagual Julian... Well, let's just say he lived a very uh, colorful life, full of, shall we say, indulgences. Oh, really? I don't think I've heard this one. Oh, yeah. Lots of uh, distractions, let's call them. <laughs> but Don Juan says it was precisely in all that excess that the spirit found its opening to, as he put it, knock on Julian's door. So it wasn't some big spiritual retreat or anything. It was the opposite. Yeah. It's almost like sometimes you need to shake things up to really see clearly, you yeah. know, disrupt those patterns, those ruts we get into. I can see that. Makes you wonder if sometimes our idea of what's spiritual is actually what's holding us back. Like we're looking for it in the wrong places. Totally. It's like that saying, we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay. The spirit has made itself known, given us a knock. Hmm. What happens when we answer the door? Well, that brings us to the third core. And this one's called the trickery of the spirit. Don't let the name throw you, though. Trickery. Sounds kind of ominous. <laughs> yeah. It's not about malicious tricks or anything, but the universe's way of pushing us, challenging us to grow in ways we might not expect. Okay, I'm intrigued, but give me an example here. How does this trickery actually work? All right, well, how about this? Don Juan tricked Castaneda into wearing women's clothes. He did what? We heard that right. Oh, man, got to hear more about that one. It's a wild story, and maybe for another time, but the point is, it was about shaking up Castaneda's self-image. We get so attached to our roles, our identities. Right, comfortable little boxes we put ourselves in. And sometimes the spirit, the universe, whatever you want to call it, needs to break through that, you know? 
mm-hmm. force us to confront those rigid parts of ourselves. So it's less about the clothes themselves and more about... Exactly. Disrupting expectations, pushing boundaries. Mm-hmm. It's, it's saying, oh, you think you know who you are? Let's see how you handle this. That's a good point. And I guess that kind of trickery, it can show up in so many ways, right? Sudden change of plans, an encounter with someone unexpected. Oh, absolutely. Any kind of curveball that life throws at you. That's the thing. It's not always going to be comfortable or make sense at the time. The key is recognizing it, seeing it as an opportunity. Not an obstacle. Exactly. Okay, so we've had the manifestation, the knock, even a little trickery. What's next? Where does that leave us on this on this sorcerer's journey? It leads to the fourth abstract core, which Don Juan calls the descent of the spirit. Descent. Okay, that sounds kind of intense. What does that even mean? Well, it can be intense, but it's not about fear or punishment or anything like that. It's more about surrender, letting go of control, letting go of who you think you are so you can become who you truly are. Surrender. That's a tough one for a lot of us. It is, but Don Juan, he talks about this idea of ruthlessness. Ruthlessness? Like being mean. No, no, not at all. It's about being ruthless with your ego, that inner critic that holds us back, you know? Right, that voice that tells us we're not good enough, not worthy. That's the one. Dismantle that voice. Easier said than done, right? But I get it. Dismantling those limitations, even if it's uncomfortable. It's the only way to really grow. Okay, so they've done all this work, shattered their self-image, navigated the trickery, How do they even know if it's working? How do they know if they've truly let go? Well, that's where this story of the four Tulios comes in. The four Tulios? Who are they? This is where things get really interesting. Imagine four men, identical, who can blend their awareness so seamlessly they appear as one person. Wait, what? How is that even possible? Whether you take the story literally or not, it makes you question the whole idea of identity, doesn't it? If they can choose to appear as one or many, then who are we really? Beneath all the layers, all the masks we wear. It's like they're saying, don't get too attached to who you think you are because it's not as solid as you think. Right. And once you start questioning that, you open up a whole new way of seeing the world. Yeah, it makes you think about all those layers we build up, all those identities. What's underneath all that? Right. That's the real question, isn't it? So they've shattered the mirror, so to speak, seen through the trickery, experienced that descent of the spirit. Where does that leave them? Where does this sorcerer's path lead? Well, according to Don Juan, it leads to a state of silent knowledge. Silent knowledge? Sounds peaceful, but I gotta be honest, I'm not quite getting a clear picture of what that actually is. It's tough to put into words. It's a state of awareness that's beyond language, beyond thought, experiencing reality directly without that constant filter of your internal monologue running. Castaneda, he describes it like looming over the desert, seeing the landscape from all these different viewpoints at once, almost like some kind of expanded consciousness or something, right? Exactly. And what's amazing is Don Juan gives this really powerful example from his own life. He talks about being swept away by this raging river, almost drowning. And then suddenly he experiences himself running alongside the riverbank, watching his own struggle, but from this detached perspective. So in that moment of crisis, his awareness just shifted and he got this glimpse into that silent knowledge that's how he describes it yeah it's like in that life or death situation something broke through makes you wonder what else is possible what kind of potential we have locked inside us just waiting for the right moment to be activated right it's like how much of reality are we not seeing because of the way we normally look at things exactly and that's what don juan wants us to see that this silent knowledge it's not some supernatural ability it's more like a primal awareness we've lost touch with because we rely so much on language, on reason, on thinking about things instead of just experiencing them. It's like when you're totally absorbed in something, painting, music, even a really good conversation, that inner voice just kind of quiets down. Yes. Those moments of flow where you're completely present, no past, no future, just the experience itself. Mm. That's a taste of what silent knowledge can be like. Huh. Okay. I think I'm starting to get it. But how do we actually cultivate that? Don Juan, he doesn't just leave us hanging with these glimpses, right? No, he talks about a practice, he calls it stopping the world. Stopping the world? Sounds kind of daunting, like literally stopping time. Uh Uh-huh, no, no, not like that. It's more about interrupting our usual way of seeing, you know, breaking free from that constant chatter in our heads instead of being lost in thoughts, worrying about the past or the future. Bringing your attention to the present moment. Exactly. 
shifting focus away from that internal dialogue and just directly experiencing reality as it unfolds. It's funny, I've tried meditation and man, it's hard to quiet that voice in my head, it just keeps going and going. It takes practice for sure. But Don Juan, he was adamant that this stopping the world is crucial for reaching that state of true awareness. He compares it to like looking at a reflection in a mirror. Mm. If we're constantly fixated on our own image, we miss everything else that's going on around us. So it's about letting go of that self-obsession, that need to be right in the center of everything. And when you do that, that's when you can really start to see things differently. Okay, so we've talked about starting the world, but there's also this idea of intent, right? Like it's this force that connects everything. Yeah, this is where it gets really wild. Don Juan describes it almost like a field of energy, this web that binds everything together. And he says, it's not about controlling this force, but learning to align ourselves with it. So less about bending reality to our will and more about like getting in sync with something that's already there. Exactly. He even uses the metaphor of a dance, learning the steps, moving into harmony with this universal rhythm. Okay, that makes sense. But if this intent is everywhere, why don't we experience it more in our lives? Why doesn't it feel so powerful all the time? That's the thing. Don Juan says our own self-importance gets in the way. That need to control everything, to manipulate situations, it creates this kind of interference. So how do we cut through that interference? By cultivating what Don Juan calls impeccability. Impeccability. Okay, now that's a big word. Break that down for me. It's not about being perfect, don't worry. It's more about aligning your actions with your highest intentions, living with awareness, integrity, respect for yourself, and everything around you. So showing up as your best self consistently and trusting that by doing that, you're somehow aligning yourself with this universal force of intent. That's the idea, yeah. Recognizing that we're not separate from this force, we're expressions of it. And as we work on ourselves, on our thoughts, our actions, our very being, we become more aligned with its flow. Wow. This is a lot to take in, but seriously, incredibly inspiring stuff. So for those of us listening who are really intrigued by all this, what's the first step? Where do we even begin to explore this silent knowledge, this connection with intent? You know, I think Don Juan would probably say the first step is just awareness. Pay attention to your thoughts, your actions, your patterns. Notice those moments when you're caught up in self-doubt, in fear, and gently bring your attention back to this moment, right here, right now. So it's about curiosity, right? About questioning everything, including our own assumptions, being open to the possibility that there's way more to reality than we realize. Absolutely. And remembering it's a journey, not a destination. Yeah. No finish line, just a continual process of exploring, discovering, and becoming more and more aligned with the magic that's already all around us. Yeah. Well said. What a deep dive this has been into the world of Carlos Castaneda and Don Juan Maris. This idea that real power, true sorcery, isn't about spells or rituals, but about mastering our own awareness, letting go of those limitations we put on ourselves and learning to dance with that mysterious force of intent. Maybe the greatest magic of all is simply aligning ourselves with the universe's own inherent magic.